Welcome to another episode of Lifestyle After Five. It's we your back. host, Ali and Lord Shu. As if you've seen our previous episode, as we talked about exploring futurism with Richard Brankowski. He's back to start this 29 episode series with us as we dive deep into unveiling what tomorrow brings. As I like his corn phrase, people of color would be here in the future. And though Richard is going to break things down, I mean, he got some amazing things to share as we go through this journey. So make sure you tune in, like, and subscribe. You do not want to miss a single episode. This man brings a lot of wealth of knowledge. So welcome back, Richard from Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got to start calling him Richard Normus B. Y'all, y'all see his rap name. That's his rapper name. Yo. <laughs> yes, yes. Please address me by my correct rap name, sir. Richard Rich, Rich Normus. Rich, Rich Normus is what we do. So today we're diving into the world of futurism. You know what it is, what it comes from, and what it means. Because we kind of gave in the in the last episode, we just kind of we kind of went all over the places. We described gave a broad kind of a broad definition we went to covered a lot of topics that was included sure, into yeah. futurism so basically today we just want to nail it down as to what is futurism rich rich yeah, so rich rich you must be thank you very much for my correct name um thank you ali uh <laughs> yes so um so futurism uh is a started actually in the 1900s as a like an artistic and social movement uh, that emphasized like speed and technology and, uh, and, and more about like kind of like rejection of the current uh, like kind of artistic flows, the current political movements, so kind of thing like that. So it, it has kind of evolved more into the modern context of it is, uh, you know, taking information today uh, and making predictions about like what the future would be using various different methodologies and uh, tools and trends. Uh, by definition, it's meant to be bold. It's meant to be obviously somewhat exaggerated from what we understand things today because it is kind of a push, you know, into what the future might hold or might be. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is powered by imagination, speculation. You know, there is data, you know, but it by, again, by definition, it always has to be grounded, you know, with, you know, uh, you know, grounded with original, again, original thought, uh, with analysis, you know, and um, and just and sometimes just common sense. Okay. Also, I know uh, before we started recording this, you mentioned uh, future thinking, like the framework of it. So can you kind of expand on that too, so people can kind of just know where to start? Right. Yeah. So future thinking. You know, you know, takes that obviously to the you know the next step when it comes to the the ability to start making actionable you know plans on it, right? It's not just a concept. Yeah. yeah. So it's much more systematic, you know, much more analytic, you know, types of thinking for potential futures. All right. You know, there's always you know, again some type of goal, right? Futurism and futurists usually do things within five and ten year increments, as when they're doing their predictions. You know, and, and um, future thinking involves a lot of methodology like scenario planning, trend analysis, you know, strategic forecasting kind of in general. But it's, um, you know, uh, its aim is to prepare individuals or organizations, you know, for multiple um, future outcomes. That's why my tag is, you know, futures with an S. Right, because it's not mm -hmm. finished yet. Right, it's still kind of going. It's, it's going to be more than one. I would never come up with just one, you know, kind of point. One you know? single future, yeah. Yeah, uh, or again, using those methodologies to come up with, you know, just you know, or, or a different one or kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, it emphasizes, um, you know, adaptability, you know, and uh, also like resilience into uncertain times, you know, in certain places. Uh, uh, let's see, it's um, a lot of future thinking is, you know, is used for product development, uh, you know, for, you know, business policy making um, and, and more, you know, 
I think that like like every like always, it should be like uh, there's an aspect of personal development in futurism as well because you know you are that act, you know you are part of it. So um, yeah. I'm, and, I'm glad you brought that up, Rich, when you talked about personal development because when I think of futurism, uh, futurists, I think of people like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. I don't. The common person doesn't come to mind when it comes to being a futurist. But so that begs my question, can a common person or let me restate that question. Why should it why should the common person be interested in future being coming a futurist and futurism? All right. So there's basically two things. One, your job, your country and kind of other things don't care about kind of what you're doing right you are mm -hmm. responsible for what you're doing and what you're going to be doing in, in the near future right mm -hmm. so it has to be like a personal again responsibility uh, you know when it comes to what you're doing and it also kind of leads into the you know the kind of constant need for development and learning you know you're you know mm -hmm. One part of future thinking, one part of futurism is that you're always learning. You're always looking at different, you know, you're always trying to mm -hmm. research something, you know, this and that. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, the vitalness of futurism I and mean, future thinking now is because nothing is the same. There isn't, you know, you we can use the past. And, and again, I'm now going to ask you to look, you know, as yourself, right? So, you know, your mm -hmm. past, right? you know, where things kind of with what worked, what didn't work, right? But... Mm -hmm. You know, the future doesn't, our current future, definitely the way technologies and again, cultural changes and all the other, doesn't, it doesn't fit into the past, right? The future thinking and stuff like that, it, there's just, uh, there's a quote or an, actually I think it's a, a name of uh, uh, another futurist that I, you know, uh, speak to and follow. It's like the, you know, the future doesn't fit into past containers. Right. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there's a lot of things that we're going to be talking about or a lot of things that are currently being thrust on people that they have no reference to to even kind of get an idea about what they should be doing. So um, would you agree? I, it's kind of been my observation that a lot of people like to hold on. And it's just the opposite. A lot of people like to hold on to the past. They think about past. Like if you look into the political climate that we got going there, here it is, all these technologies, self driving cars, and you still got people asking for manufacturing and coal mining jobs to come back. Isn't that sad? Right? Yeah. Isn't that, yeah. And yeah. almost scary, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, there is a, you know, again, another big part of future thinking is, you know, the encouragement of long term planning and decision making. Right. So it's it's the long game. You know, we all have short games that we're all, you know, playing right now. Right. But if you don't have a long game for yourself, right, or for your family or again, mm -hmm. for your company, or your, you know, then you're cutting out a lot. And um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, AI is obviously you know, kind of pushed a lot of thinking in that, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, and all the different technologies and the speed of technology, which is, I think a lot of people don't realize and, you know, kind of go, there. but, uh, you know, personal choice, if you want to stay behind, you know, and kind of watch every kind of everything, you know, move forward, uh, you know, I, that's not who, you know, it's not who I am. And I know it's not a lot of the people who I, you know, who I, you know, my span was clearly not you guys, right? But, uh, you know, so you can either be static or dynamic, right? And, you know, static is good. You know, there's, a, you know, there, there's room for it. Um, you know, uh, it's called poverty. <laughs> right. It's called unemployment. It's called poverty. <laughs> it's called hard times and yeah. making life, your life more difficult than ever. That's what static is called. Right. Uh, you know, the, when people come to me for career advice, you know, and after I do, you know, a little background check on them, you know, just do, you know, uh, you know, I, what I tell them, and I think this is probably 75% of the advice I give them is that you, you will, everyone will, and then you you know, within the next five years, will have to invent your job. There's not going to be any uh, title or kind of anything like that, you know, going on, you know, like mm -hmm. they don't fit your skill sets anymore. You know what companies need. They say that again, Rich. That, that's a moment. 
Take a pen and paper and write that down. Woo! So people oh, need to oh, that man. again. Say that again. That's that's a moment. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'll say, okay. the, the shorter version of that is that in the future, you are going to have to invent your own job. That job just wow. doesn't exist. That's the past. You know, uh, you know, the guy who used to deliver milk, you know, in the 20s. Right. <laughs> you, know, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. You know, it's, you know that, that's an obvious one. Right. But we can kind of, you know, uh, again, we could identify opportunities, right? And and more importantly, measure, you know, measure risk on that potential scenario that you're, you know, that you're going down. So future thinking and futurism all kind of, you know, those concepts all deal with obviously the future and, but it's structured, you know, that it's practical, you know, it could be, and more importantly, you know, it's creative and has vision, you know, like we, we need all of that, you know, going on now. And, uh, you know, people call it like a pseudoscience, which I guess it is, right? But, uh, <laughs> you know, but it employs tools, right? It employs, you know, methodology. Sorry. I mean, this is kind of how, you know, in some forms, a version of just decision making, you know? And, you know, again, at, you know, do I want to drive off this cliff or do I want to, you know, turn around? Right? Again, it's your decision, you know? But I, I, I don't see how futurism can, could be considered a pseudoscience. I mean, we are moving into the future every day things have changed and whether you like it or not the earth keeps spinning yeah well i guess just the definition of like for future uh for pseudoscience science is that science likes you know likes to be able to measure and pr uh, predict measure and test outcomes yeah. right um yeah, yeah. and so you you can't kind of really do that with futurism because yeah. and you can do some of it right but you can't test the outcome you can't do anything you know you can't but you know there are you know aspects of that you know in there, right? You know, uh, I, I think you can't measure the, the future, but I think you can measure the progress that you have made as you have moved forward in the future. Yeah, both with yourself, uh, you know, that's trend mm -hmm. and trend analysis, you know, kind yeah, of yeah. you know, in one version of it. Um, you know, and, and again, some mm -hmm. of it I find, you know, again, is some something kind of common sense, right? Like you know. If I, you know, uh, if I try to go through this door 10 times and it's locked, probably doesn't make any <laughs> sense for me to keep on, you know, you know, I'm going to go try to find another door or more importantly, going to make my own door, right? I'm going to knock it down, you know, knock down another piece of wall or kind of something like that. So, but the, uh, you know, but there is a lot of methodology in it. There is a lot of, you know, uh, kind of learning and there's a lot of common sense and it's not never, I guess it might never really be finished. You know, because the first rule about it is just kind of forget about predictions. You know, like, you know, I will, you know, I make forecasts. We make forecasts, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm never going to say or no, you know, no, no sane person is going to say 100% that this is going to happen and happen. You know, we use mm -hmm. you know, models, I think 85%, you know, chance or 50% of chance, right? And then if I know that it's 85% a chance for me to do something or, you know, that's where I'm going to put my time and give something else 20% of time. You know. And, you know, so there's like, you know, there are all those parts on how you kind of start to incorporate that in here. But, you know, um, I like futurism and future thinking, and especially when it comes to the kind of look back to look forward is a big, you know, one of the like kind of number three on the list of things. Uh, you know, and, and for some, you know, for some people, uh, you know, it's breaking like, fa like bad family traditions, right? Yeah. And my father yeah. was an alcoholic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that, you know, watched it, you know, I saw back how it affected his life and how it affected his family and how it affected his job and all that, right? So, you know, pretty easy for me, or at least it looked like it was pretty easy for me to, you know, not go down that road. You know, I may right. have, you know, an intent, you know, an internal tendency, you know, for alcohol, but, you know, it, it didn't work. You know, I kind of see, I, I watch it, you know, I kind of see it around. Mm -hmm. I'm not against alcohol or whatever like that, but, you know, uh, you know, it's not a huge thing in my future, I just say. I like, I like how you bring all that together, man. It's really... Uh... The frameworks is is for right now, but also can build up to be more of a, um, a look into ethics because now we're talking about technology and personal advancement, and they kind of go hand in hand. So, what what is your take on 
um, I guess like how do we balance technology with ethic with ethics? Like how can that work in the future using this framework? Well, one it just to know that that it exists, right? You know that it's not just we're not blindly following, you know, certain uh, directions or certain things that you know we had seen in the past or you know did in the past we didn't know any better um you know um ethics is you know another version is like you know do we even have the right to do this or you know is it you know going on here or can it be used you know against us in some you know kind of in some form so like you know so there is um you know the balance is never they're new so we don't know right and so you know in mm -hmm. some forms and ethics will know we'll have some bumps like kind of on the road right uh you know um, a big um topic for ethics is the use of uh you know uh, automatic or artificially intelligent guided weapons right mm -hmm. that comes up a lot obviously you know so there is no longer a human behind it making those kind of decisions you know we've kind of told it everything it needs to do right but you know there will be you know and it's going to follow our rules you know but you know our rules don't always kind of make you know kind of don't make sense as well too and you know uh do we does it are we taking away responsibility you know um so you know it, it it's you know there's never really like a strong correlation like if i do you know kind of 50 50 but you know what what it's important is just just to note that it's there right that note that we need to address it you know even though whatever we don't know what it might be um you know so it's it's you know i don't know if i did a kind of really good job about it but there's a um, you know a humanistic aspect to it that uh would work best for everyone if we addressed it first if we got kind of got it out of the way right we kind of used our imagination or predicted to say you know how this is going to work how that's going to work and then make the cross corrections make the you know and then you know go on so in ethics world we all know we're going to hit a wall somewhere or we're going to hurt somebody somewhere you know un unintentionally but you know yeah. we it just comes know, with but it if we, but if we can figure it out Right, and then you know beforehand we can you know uh, we can save a lot of pain and grief. Now, now, Rich, let's back up a little bit. We talk about futurism as if it's just something that just happened today, but in following some of your work, I believe you stated that futurism started back in the early of 20th century, and I believe you gave some examples of H.G. Wells and Isaac Asimov. I may not be pronouncing that dead right. right. I'm off. Yeah. And right. the works that shape the public perceptions of the of the future. Can you can you talk a little bit about that history? Right. Well, that goes into um, you know, again, one of the main categories, and again, very powerful one is like for at least for those two writers, you know, kind of back then, was um the uh is science fiction, you know, because science fiction uh, you know, allows for um uh, the non adherence to strict rules right mm -hmm. so you know again flying to the moon or you know or you know again digging in the ground or you know yeah and again that's that is why i focus you know a lot of my intention or at least you know a, you know a fifth of my intention on science fiction you know is this story you know is the story already out there has somebody already been working on it you know is it you know that what was behind it uh you know as i mentioned um and i do again uh I'm not answering your question about like when it all happened like and again the 19th you know again the 19th uh, century into the early 20th century but it's more of it but that was it's a you know it started as a you know a, we're not happy the way things are going right mm -hmm. and, and you know we are going to you know at least think at least kind of change you know on on way that we're going to be measuring things looking at things where we want to be right i don't want to be where you know I was told, you know, we're in the 19th century because we mostly all kind of came from, you know, your grandfather was a farmer, your father was a farmer, mm -hmm. there's a good chance you're going to be a farmer, right? You know, it's like, <laughs> right. you, you know, that there were like all these like old rules that were kind of written that don't apply anymore and or, you know, 
don't, you don't want to be part of it, you know, but you just can't walk away, turn around and say nothing, you know? And so the futurism, you know, kind of built, you know, out of there, built out of unhappiness, you know, of, of its current system. Yeah. Another uh, kind of cool thing to know is like there's a, the Chinese word for crisis is Weiji, right? And so it mean we means crisis, but G means opportunity. So there's, you know, always the way the word by definition kind of works out in Japanese is that there's always like an opportunity to rise from crisis. Right. And I think that's mm -hmm. like a really good way if you want to look at like how like the, the, the you know, the, the, you know, the kind of like the development or what you, or kind of how people, you know, think or see about unhappiness. Yeah. I wonder, is there a correlation between that and the Ouija board? <laughs> I don't think the Chinese had the Ouija board. Yeah, I think that's a Western thing. I would not advise using the Ouija board. <laughs> well, what do you got to get? I'm very futuristic. <laughs> well, you know, but if you want to look at it, it's a tool, right? You know, if, you, if you're going to be using metaphysics, right, instead of futurism, you, know, you right. can go to the Ouija board, you know, use a little tarot cards, right? And yeah, use kind your of own see, risk. You know, What's popping up there? Shout out to metaphysics. <laughs> well, again, why close that out, right? I learned a lot about mm -hmm. metaphysics, you know, from my futurism. Oh, you know. Yeah, metaphysics, yes. Ouija boards, uh, use at your own risk. I, 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 I'm not a fan. I love metaphysics. Not a yeah. fan of the Ouija board. Yeah, you know, and, you know, the other part of a Ouija board, it's you know, it's made by like Mattel. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that too. <laughs> You know, I mean, they it, right? yeah, so it's like, yeah, you know, I could either play, you know, Monopoly or Ouija, you know, but it's fun. Going crazy. Yeah. It's like, like again, it's, it's that other ver it's like that other idea, the other thing, you know, it's like, you yeah, know, it's yeah. still, there's something there, you know, like, mm -hmm. so I don't know, uh, um, so I don't know if I, hopefully I answered your question, you know, kind of you, about, yeah, you, you, you did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, in all these principles, uh, you know, ideas of future thinking, you know, then, um, you know, or even kind of thriving, you know, in, you know, during un, un, you know, unknown on times, uh, futurism gives you even you know, kind of something to hold on something tangible, you know, while you're trying to kind of figure all these things out, you know, it, it, it's about giving you power. Well, it's, it seems a little little more scientific in today's world where, you know, we got data science, we got analytics, and, and it seems that futurism is evolving at a very fast rate right now. Do, would you would you agree? Uh, well, I'm going to say the the tools that you just mentioned and methodologies, definitely there, definitely, I mean, definitely here, definitely useful, definitely, you know, kind of anything, but I don't think the regular person or the regular company is using any of those things to try to figure out the past uh try to try to figure out the future what data and data analysis and stuff like that will give you is a good understanding about the past and again that's useful information right because there's no data on the future right, right. so if you're yeah. stuck as a data person that you won't make a move until you know you've kind of ran everything over. you know you're going to you're going to be stuck you can't do nothing you can't think outside that way again now some say the past will some say the past will predict the future that is true again uh the and we can kind of you know kind of skip to that part you know they always say like future i mean the pet like uh you know history repeats itself is a very yeah. big part of that part but it's not a hundred percent true on that. It's more like, uh, like trend, like trends of the past repeat mm -hmm. themselves, you know? So, um, and th as I met, and then I was saying, it's a very, actually a very important part, or at least you know, again, of you know, kind of like the basics of future thinking. Um, but it's not kind of alone. You know, and, and you know, it's not mm -hmm. you know multimodal, right? You wouldn't just use that to you know to go there. But really, to answer your questions, I don't see uh, in general. And again, I just think maybe because it's we haven't need had the time, or maybe we just didn't have the need 
you know, everything was kind of going well. Everyone thought everyone would be kind of going, you know, everyone would be following the, you know, the rules that we were told that were going to work, like, you know, stay out of trouble, keep your head down in school, you know, graduate, get your job, you know, have your family, you know, retire. They don't exist. <laughs> that that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's a past thing, right? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, in the past, you can kind of use that, you know, but, um, but the trends, you know, uh, you know, kind of that you kind of see, and we kind of keep seeing over and over again, you could use it in your favor, uh, you know, uh, but, um, but, you know, there, you know, that, you know, I, I, I feel like there's a human part of that, like just, just as a human, humans, we do the same things, like we, we're all heading in the same direction, regardless of what we, you know, if we know it or not, you know, there's just certain things that, you know, we need ladders because we have two feet, right? You know, so it's, you know, so it's kind of, you know, kind of, I don't know if I kind of, that was, might, might have been a bad example, but yeah, so there are parts of the past that repeat itself. It doesn't have yeah. to be all of the past. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, uh, this has been a great episode because just from listening to you talk today, basically, the future is laying itself out for it to be created essentially from right now you know even though like you said there's some pieces that we can take into the future really it's like free game anybody can just take your framework well take the future thinking framework and then just essentially create whatever they want this to look like and bringing your own personality to it like bringing your own passions you know like that yeah there's the there's that really important part about it yeah is uh you know like it like it, we can't do what we used to do before right and then so everyone everyone is like has a little bit of the future in them and so if we get them all together we can start yeah kind of step then together it can be like a community I, 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 i'm glad you said that because that was going to be my next question because there's futurism and then there's afrofuturism and i just want to know do you think there will ever be a point where the two combine to just become futurism um, that's a great question. I'm gonna have to get you know, let me kind of work on that a little bit because that means like, um, that's there, right? When we're all there, all of us, right? Where mm -hmm. it doesn't make uh, you know, it makes no difference, kind of like again, exactly, you know, some of the myopic aspects of what goes on, you know, in the world, and mm -hmm. and um but also like of my past, right? So a lot of Afrofuturism reflects back on, you know, the past of, you know, of black lives, right? I'm obviously never gonna be able to kind of, you know, know that, understand that and stuff. I, you know, I, I want to, and I spend a lot of time, you know, reading about it, thinking about mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and again, applying it to the future, right? But so like, I hope, you know, in 500 years, all that's gone away, right? When all that, you know, we're all on that same chart. We're all heading the same direction. We, you know, the stuff we don't remember, you know, it do doesn't help us. You know, like, uh, you know, like we don't list, you know, like uh, almost like like old like genres, like 1920s music, 1930s music. Nobody wants it. Nobody cares about it. You know, like in some forms, because it's all kind of gone. It's all with those dead people in the past. We're doing future kind of thing. You know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I look forward to that to that day yes that it makes that we all have we're all using the same like versions of futurism and stuff like that and you know what the you know old parts the things that always kind of got in our way and you know whatever like that like racism and poverty and all that other stuff. uh you know that all kind of you know uh it's just a, some kind of lost memory you know kind of in the back but I did want to kind of mention something like, uh, oh, here's a great example using science fiction, you know, for that. In Star Trek, which I'm going to reference a lot because, you know, that is one of the more, probably the only positive, you know, futuristic, you know, entertainment that's kind of out there. And I don't know if you know about it uh, or how much of the show that you know, but there's, you know, where people get their food, you know, from, right? It's a kind of food replicator, right? Mm -hmm. So you basically, it's a kind of a program, you know, so it's, I, you know, very you know the the 3d printers that we have these days which is again amazing and do amazing things um you know uh will be 
like kind of what the food replicator is. You, you give it a, you know, a formula, you know, a, you know, kind of a chart, a formula or kind of something like that. And it just goes and makes it right. But it doesn't, you know, but eventually in the future, it also makes medicine, right? It also makes water. It also makes everything. Right? So the turning point in like the Star Trek future world was when the replicator came, right? Because what, when the replicator came, poverty went away, despair went away. Un, like right. uncertainly went away, you know, all, like, you know, all of that, everyone had, you know, enough to, you know, to kind of go on at all. Everybody was equal, you know, everyone had, you know, like kind of going there. And then when that all happens, you know, um, we have you know, nothing better to do, but to take it to the next level. Right. Yep. That's kind of where I like to see futurism and you know, all of us go is that, you know, we kind of get rid of all that bottom shit crap and stuff yeah. like that you're all like focusing on more important things or you know better things to help the next level or do whatever you kind of want to go in there uh but wow. just, to bring, just to bring things back into the kind of the community part you know and again all futurism as you know i've said this hundred times has to you know has to have pot it has to be positive right yes and it, and, it, and then it has to have a, a a component to community it just doesn't work you know it's just not you don't you're not using it all you're not using it all on the, like the same pistons and stuff like that and you know even in this aspect the three of us are in kind of a new community talking about futurism you know kind of talking about what we have seen what we have learned more importantly sharing it amongst ourselves so we yeah. can kind of adjust ours you know it's not real futurism if there isn't a community if there isn't kind of a community goal to it you know and a, yeah and the fact that you know there's a you know, if you want to put it in there, that's the also part about the whole diversity, you know, aspect of it. You know, we, you know, we need to get other, you know, let's just say experts involved in our decision making. And, you know, and, and an expert is, you know, whatever you're, you know, an expert too. Right. So it has to be a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different topics, you know, different demographics, you know, economics, people with techno, you know, different understandings of technology, you know, different understandings of, um, you know, uh, you know, all new things that are going on, right? You need young people's perspectives on this, and you need right. older people's perspectives on this, right? And you um, know, and, and and again, this is what you know, what inf you know, inspired me about Afrofuturism. And again, in the language that I have used, you know, is that there are going to be black people in the future, right? <laughs> and you know, if you're not thinking that way, right, and if you're working on something and that's not even considered, right? not even considered but then you know you don't have a representative of those communities or that community you know working on your future you know scenario it's not futurism you know wow that's that's that, that that's a big one there that, that that's a handful there i don't get, no I don't get, get the noise for that one the write down the Jamaican club horns. Yeah, we need the Jamaican club horns. Yeah, we need to get the horns on that one. You get the horns on that one. We need everybody. Yeah, yeah. we need everybody. Right. You know, as I'm saying, it's not you know, and, and again, it might be obvious to thinkers like us, right? Right, but there's not a lot of that going on, right? And just to have you know a futurist remind you of that you know, is, um, you know, my work will then be done. Well, Rich, Rich Normus B, you've done an awesome job giving us the introduction into futurism yes, and taking them through the history of it. I can definitely now understand and hope the listeners can understand what futurism is and why it is important to us now as well as moving forward in the future. If you made right. it this far and listened to us, like and subscribe so that for you can check the next Please. episode when yeah. Rich talked about the digital coach and its impact on modern society. So you yeah. don't want to miss that. So go ahead, click the like button and subscribe. That way you'll be alerted next time Rich comes you. with another episode. We need that. We need you. We need you to come in. We need your feedback. We need you to yes. share your thoughts. You need to hear our thoughts. You gotta be part Put of them in the comments. comments. Yeah, keep the comments. conversation going. Put in the comments and we'll answer your questions with Rich in the comments. He official. He know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, and again, there's always, uh, you know, I, I'd like to, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, there's a, uh, you know, uh, another kind of, if you needed like a trick or something about to, you know, when you have finally figured out where you want to be or what that goal is or kind of something like that, you know, if you get, if you take anything away from, you know, from this, you never come back. 
for some strange reason you know it's like it's it's to like kind of think backwards from your goal right so you know i know uh you know a lot of goals for a lot of companies you know that i'm dealing with when it comes to like will their you know will their products will they you know will they be relevant you know or kind of something like that or um go and you know go to that spot go to that 10 year future right and you know make it real and again there's ways that we can do that and then figure out what you got to do to get to that last you know so it's kind of working backwards right it's like you ever do those mazes right and that start mm -hmm. and finish right yeah sometimes it's a lot easier to get from the finish right and then kind of find like mm -hmm. kind of find your way to the start very same thing like that and then what you will find if you take that out is you know kind of usually kind of goes from you know uh you know i need to you know we need to change like say like the political environment for it to understand or whatever like that that we want to continue to have you know uh free lunches or something kind of like in school or you know uh you know. so it, you just kind of if you take that kind of go back one more and how do we get the political people to get in mind that means you have to kind of organize and you know kind of get that part through and means you need to you know get people to rally and understand those kind of first questions so they can kind of tell their political people so we can kind of change the laws you know so we can kind of get to there right so again quick okay. hint work backwards if you have to do cool. it cool cool well we definitely thank you rick <laughs> This has definitely has been inspiring. Yeah. 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 Like I said, like, subscribe, and Please. thank you for joining us on this journey into the future. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace out, y'all.